why Joel Embiid is an MVP favorite. Philly's center has had five games so far where he's dropped at least 33 points and is doing things we haven't seen since Wilt Chamberlain. So this video will take a look at the improved aspects to Embiid's game that have allowed him to dominate and make sure you stay tuned for a prediction of whether or not Joel will take home his first NBA award this year. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, as well as stories about the league, welcome aboard. You definitely came to the right place. Please subscribe and hit notifications so you're updated every time I post content. Now let's get into this. Embiid's been proving he's one of the top post-up players in the league and one of the most dominant NBA scoring threats in general. Whether he's facing up or backing down in there, he'll either A, jab step, then make a 10 to 17 foot jumper in traffic, B, drop step, then fight his way to the basket off the dribble, or C, turn around for a fadeaway. To add to his defender's nightmare, Joel's combining that post-up game with his new and improved shooting touch from beyond the arc. Take a look at how his three-point shot in last year's playoffs, where he made just 20% of his attempts compared to his form from deep range this season. In the bubble, his release was rigid, he landed off balance, and he was hesitant to let it fly. Conversely, in 2021, his shooting mechanics are on point. The flow, landing, and follow through on the one, two step threes that you're seeing has led Joel to shoot a career high by far 40% from three point range. An in depth breakdown on his unstoppability is coming up, but quickly flashing back to 2014, where what we're currently witnessing in Philly was all just a dream for GM Sam Hinkie and the Sixers who were embracing the process. Foot injuries would keep the Sixers' third overall draft pick and at the time 20-year-old Embiid sidelined for two years, and more injuries would keep Embiid out 109 games from his first season in 2016-17 through to 2019-20. But within that time frame, he was still able to make two all-defensive teams, two all-NBA teams, and become a three-time All-Star. In the midst of that, they were the tears after a heartbreaking loss in 2019 at the hands of the Kawhi roll, and then the embarrassment after being swept out of the playoffs in the 2020 bubble. But this year, us NBA fans are finally getting to know the type of threat that a fully healthy, fully in shape, fully motivated Joel Embiid poses, and it's a special sight to see. Through 14 games, it's clear that Embiid is out for vengeance on the league, as he's putting up 27.7 points, 11.5 boards, 1.3 steals, and 1.4 blocks per game on another career high by far, 55% shooting from the field. In two games against Boston recently, Joel dropped a combined 80 points on 23 of 34 shooting from the field and 31 of 36 shooting from the free throw line. This man can draw fouls. But after that, he posted 33 points and 14 rebounds in a win over the Detroit Pistons on the road. That's the fourth time in Joel's career that he's had three straight games of 30 points and 10 rebounds. Will Chamberlain and Charles Barkley are the only other Sixer players in franchise history with as many 30 and 10 games consecutively. Before he achieved that, Embiid made franchise history against the Miami Heat, taking control in the fourth quarter and overtime, becoming the first Sixer player with 45 points, 15 rebounds, and 5 steals in a game ever. In the win, he also became the first Sixer since Charles Barkley to record a 45-point, 15-rebound performance. The 45 that he posted were the third most that he's ever scored in a game in his career. To be fair, Miami didn't have Bam Adebayo because of COVID-19 protocol, but it's those type of stat lines from Embiid that prove to you how dominant he's been this season. A big reason for why Embiid is able to take over games at will is the fact that he's not forcing things. He's not demanding the ball saying, I need to score now, I need this many points. You may see him get 6 to 10 points in the first half of a game and only make a few field goals. It's like he's having a quiet game. But Embiid doesn't overextend his energy in the early parts of games, which allows his stamina to be at a peak level down the stretch. Joel's willingness to let his teammates get their games going when opposing defenses decide to double him is something we hadn't seen from him in past years at this high of a level. He knows that coaches are going to be game planning to stop him in particular, so the passing Joel's been displaying this year has opened up a ton for him. That makes it so he's not doubled every single possession. He's far from the passer that Nikola Jokic is, or even Bam Adebayo, but Embiid's decision-making has taken a significantly positive step forward. 
The MVP prediction is on its way, but even though Joel may not be a nightly triple-double threat like Jokic, here's the ultimate truth to Joel's dominance. The scoring prowess that he brings individually creates a dangerous threat for opponents from every area on the floor. If you're a defender going to check Joel at the three-point line, his handle in between game and slashing, not to mention an all-time great post-up game in the making, will be good enough to get it done. The 40 points per game he averaged last week were the result of Joel perfectly mixing up which of those weapons to utilize throughout a game. Next, I'll predict if Embiid will win MVP, you gotta stick around for that. I'll also show you who he's competing with for the award this year, but I have to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers offseason signings and draft picks, plus the internal development of a player like Shake Milton, who significantly benefited the Sixers all-star one-two punch. But Ben Simmons has really struggled this year, he's only averaging 12 points. However, most notably, Tyrese Maxey has looked like a complete steal. He's dropped 39 points in a game. Danny Green's a three-time champion. He's played pretty well this year. And Seth Curry's one of the most efficient three-point shooters in the league. The floor spacing those two, as in Danny and Seth provide, has been a major luxury for the Sixers all-star in the middle. But the signing that's been the biggest bonus for Joel is Dwight Howard, because Superman just heavily contributed to the Lakers championship in 2020 and has helped keep Joel fresh for the fourth quarters this year and throughout the entirety of the season, Howard playing a good chunk of minutes at the five should really improve Embiid's durability, but Howard's definitely provided a positive impact for the Sixers because they're first in the league in blocks, so maybe the former Defensive Player of the Year has taught his Sixer teammates a thing or two. Then there's been the improvement of the 54th overall pick in the 2018 draft, Shake Milton, who's putting up a career-high 15 points off the Sixers bench. He's been a breakout player this year, one of the most improved prove players this year. But now for the question you've stuck around for, is Joel Embiid the 2021 MVP? We're just over a month through the season, and an intriguing race for the trophy has unfolded. Kevin Durant's return from a torn Achilles and Seth Curry's return from wrist surgery, both of them are in peak form. The Joker Nikola Jokic could very well become the first center in NBA history to average a triple-double. Luka Doncic has heated up recently, and perhaps the biggest threats for the award, both Paul George and LeBron, are in the midst of their own incredible campaigns. The talent in the NBA today is at an all-time high, and its superstars have more than delivered early in 2021. But that talent includes the man of the hour Joel Embiid, who's dunking everything in sight and is as locked in as we've ever seen him. Even with the number two option Ben Simmons struggling this year, Embiid's led the Sixers to the number one seed in the Eastern Conference. Still, LeBron dropped 46 last night, Curry's still on fire. This is going to be a tough battle for the MVP for Joel. He's going to have to be playing consistently and not missing games like he did this last one with back tightness. But with Dwight Howard backing him up and Joel looking to be in the best shape of his career, I don't expect health to be much of a problem for Joel. However, with how tough the race is going to be for the award, I'm predicting Joel finishes as a top 3-5 to five MVP candidate. I'm not saying he won't win it, he just has to stay on the floor, but I want to know your take down below. Why or why not will Joel Embiid win MVP? I respond to every comment. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops to stay updated. Links in the description. Leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed. It really helps this video spread. This was DeepFlow. You're the best for sticking around, and I'll see you next video.